Welcome back YouTube fans. Today we're going to be uh, making a really cool little uh, architectural element for rustic themed uh, stuff. Uh, this is actually a production project we've got going on in the shop and thought we'd share a little bit of it with you uh, since it's pretty cool. We're making giant barbed wire out of these two pieces of 3 8 bar. Uh, so you know we got our two pieces cut and we're just going to basically weld them together at the ends. Doesn't take much. It's a little tack. itself to the table once in a while. We don't need that. Get out of here. Okay. Now you just throw them in the forge and get them hot. George pulling it out of the fire here. It's nice and hot. And he's going to demonstrate the safe way to do it. Keep your arms and things back. Try not to let any of that scale fall on you. As you see, that's that'll start flaking off. And a lot of it with a gas forge. That stuff falls on you. That'll burn you. But just give it a nice twist. It's real easy to twist stuff, so you don't have to be in a big hurry. There's no reason to get hurt. That's about perfect. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we've got our pieces of barbed wire twisted up. This is two pieces of 3 8 bar. We tack welded them together on the ends and we twisted them. These are a little longer. These are actually the pieces on our project that are going to get the bar. Uh, those other, that other piece was just some little short pieces we needed for uh, strength. Anyhow, we're going to lay out this here. It's uh, 47. So our barb is going to be right in there, close enough. Because keep in mind, we're trimming both ends, so there's wiggle room. So we want our barb to be between there and there. See my mark? Close enough. Now, here's where it's kind of cool. You could use a vice grip clamp uh, if you didn't want to cheat and use the welder. But uh, we're going to use the welder. If blacksmiths of yore had it, they would have used it, right? <laughs> Oh, here it is. So what we're gonna do, I've got one end dressed up to kind of be like my barb, the end of the wire, you know, on a barb, if you've ever seen a barbed wire fence. If you haven't, I feel really sorry for you. But we're gonna lay that on there. Barb needs to stick out about that far. Kinda, kind of at an angle, not too much. And then, on the side where it's going to overlap so that we hide our weld with the wrap, we want to weld it. Don't weld it on both sides, just one. Flip it here. Make sure your barb is the same way so it looks right. Just like that. Pick it up off the table a little bit. You want these two to be parallel. Okay, now we got them both tacked on there fairly well. Now we're gonna take it back to the vise and uh, we're gonna get the torch and we're gonna wrap them. Okay, see my ugly little welds there? We're gonna wrap this uh, other uh, 3 8 rod around here and cover that up. And it'll make a really cool looking barb. And it'll look just like a big giant piece of barbed wire. I'm serious. You don't wanna get your weld too hot. 
but you want to get as close to it as you can. And once you're come on around a little ways, it won't matter. So just come right in there. Keep advancing your heat. And we want to make sure we come on this side and we want to cover that weld up. So we want that bar to lay in there right next to the other one. Now, we're going to heat that one right here before we go too far with our other one. And we're going to bring it around. And cover up our other weld on the other side with the other bar. Okay, now let's just keep following this one. Coming all around. Once these both of these bars start to get pretty hot, it goes pretty quick. So just keep advancing your heat. And I always like these a little long, so I've got a place to grab onto them at the tip where it's cool. Material's cheap, it's not worth getting burned slipping off with your tongs and running your fist into this hot beast. No good. Well, why don't you wear gloves? Because I slip and burn myself through gloves way more often than if I've actually got my hand on the piece. Notice a lot of smiths work barehanded. You think we're crazy. You gotta feel what you're doing. Especially when it comes to getting all the little sharpies off of things. For your customers, you'd want it to cut you, not your customer. So you gotta run your bare hands over everything. Make sure you get it smooth. All right, here we go. Now when you finish this up, you got four laps, and you wanna make these parallel. So, or a little, a little open, a little, little, not quite parallel, but Close. And there it is. Let me pick that up out of there and show it to you. <coughs> there is a barb wrapped around that. Isn't that cool? So simple, so easy, and so cool. Is it perfect? No. It doesn't matter though, it's cool. It's made by hand, it's not supposed to be perfect. You want it perfect, have a machine spit it out, and then it's no longer art. Let's get these cut off, and I'll show you what they look like. Actually, let's let's just walk over the piece. You know, you just cut these off and uh, grind them up the way we did that there. Let's walk over and look at the project. Show you where we're putting it. That'll stay safe. All right, so here it is installed on the project. It's a mess over here in the painting area. Sorry about that. We've been peeling decals. But anyways, yeah, isn't that cool? And it's on this piece of railing. Get the horse medallion in the middle. And it comes on around. Really cool way to add some really cool decorative elements for a western themed. This is an equestrian themed project we're doing for uh, Really one of my favorite clients. I'm not gonna disclose her name unless it's cool. But yeah, thanks for coming with me. I hope you guys found that interesting.